Hey everyone, it's Carrie. I'm so glad you're joining us today on this episode of Why We Grow. Today we got the great opportunity to meet with Wendy from Wendyland. She was so interesting and had so many different and unique plants that she grows in, in, in a small space. It was so interesting. We learned so much from her, including things like jelly grass that we had never even heard about. So we are definitely learning a lot of new plants that we are going to be excited to try out. I am super excited for you all to listen and watch and learn a bunch of new things. I hope you all enjoy it as much as we did. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and chatting. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't know a lot about you. I know we've been following you on Instagram for a little bit, but you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Uh, so I picked up gardening like probably Oh, it's over a decade now. I stopped counting the <laughs> years. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I love being outdoors in nature and plants make me feel the most, I guess, present and just to enjoy the moment and seeing the abundance and the work you put in and the results or to learn from them and uh, be able to grow things that help, you know, provide for family and loved ones and just show them how to live, like just try to be healthier. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So what got you into it about a decade ago? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, my very first experience of growing was actually when I was long ago, like when I was like a child, my grandfather gave me this plant. I think it was called like night of queen of the night or something. It's like a cactus organ thing. That was like my very first plant. And then I started getting little flower seed annual stuff. And I wasn't really intensive until actually the story is a bit dark, um, right around when my cousin's passing, that was when I actually got more intense in like gardening. <clears throat> Cause I was besides being struck by it. So like sudden, I think that was like the gardening was the only thing that allowed me to get my mind off of it. Like I was really like disturbed by the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also, it was during like the recession, the first earlier recession in the early 2000s something. And so I started doing the, the patio like daily. It was like my project for like the next eight, six months, I think. And then that's when it started. Um, yeah. And then I expanded from there and realized how much it was like helping, starting doing more research about like holistic health and medicinal herbs and how it was helping my family and, um, and my dog. Like, <laughs> if it wasn't like for the garden, actually, we had like the integrative vet that told us that if I didn't have the garden ready, I wouldn't be able to provide the things that I was able to do that when she was in her like late uh, kidney failure stage that you know, mm -hmm. traditional mess, uh, Western medicine couldn't provide anymore. So like, you've got to be ready and try to be more proactive rather than uh, reactive to our health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, what an amazing story. So were, were, <laughs> was there a lot of herbs and things that you were growing for that for your dog? Or Yeah, I did a lot of from uh, blood sugar was one of the earlier plants I was growing. That's like for the family. And then with her, I started collecting things for like kidneys and, and um, liver. Uh, as we were going through, like checking up with her, her blood work, I was like, okay, I got to get stuff for like coughs. I got to get stuff for the liver and, mm -hmm. and then find out family members with certain issues are similar. Okay, I got to grow this. And these herbs you really can't buy, you know, unless you travel to very specific places in the world yeah absolutely yeah yeah and yeah i think that's awesome yeah, that's... That's... i wish more people <laughs> realized that you can think about plants that way where you're basically growing your own medicine it's not just mm -hmm. food but the food is the medicine basically exactly what you put in and hopefully what you can absorb right like it's mm -hmm. it's like a lifestyle rather than thinking of like a quick fix right this mm -hmm. is like a yeah. slower reactive yeah lifestyle and... protocol and out in California, you've got the you've got the environment where you can grow pretty much year round, right? Yeah, very That's lucky exciting. that way. That's awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, so do yeah. you have like avocado like avocado trees and all that kind of stuff? 
I don't have a big space anymore. I'm mm. packed with like an apartment building right next door yeah. where I'm growing my dragon fruit that's like eight and a half oh. feet high. Oh, nice. Usually people have it like at five feet, but uh. I'm in like a narrow space that's just about eight, no, six feet across and I think 50 feet narrow, like long. So I had to get certain plants to crawl, climb upwards to get more sun. And then when certain things like a cactus, you know, it kind of like drapes down. When it mm -hmm. cascades over, you don't want to be poking people. And that's why my, resolution, <laughs> my solution was to grow it really high. People think I'm crazy. I'm like, if you want to grow it, you want to try to make it work. That was my solution. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to see pictures of some of the some of the ways you've grown. I think there's a lot I could learn about vertical space from you. Mm -hmm. You grow a lot indoors as well, right? A lot of indoor gardening. I yeah, I start a lot of like seed starters and plants and a few you know house plants and air plants. Um, yeah, so we'll grow lights. Even got some in like the garage. <laughs> <laughs> so I also sell plants. So um, start off taking cuttings and different things and. Uh, uh, aside from that, it's just always good to have the backups for yourself. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So what type of plants do you sell? Um, mostly more like medicinal herbs or Asian tropical uh, greens. Um, yeah. Things okay. like, yeah, like a few of them that I mentioned earlier, like the Genera Pro Convents, which is called Longevity Spinach. It grows really well right now because it likes, you know, tropical. So it likes huh. the heat right now and... In the winter, they kind of slow down a bit, but then some tropical plants grow, actually can grow quite well indoors as house plants. Like let's kind of have a lot of our house plants, even the non-edibles, right? They're mm -hmm. just like, uh, yeah, the plants that grow, grows under the canopy. So um, yeah, they do quite all right or pretty well. Some even thrive better indoors. Well, that's awesome. So yeah. a lot of the hard to find plants, I need to go to you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I try to, yeah, do. That's not how I started, but I mean, that's how I started my collection. Uh -huh. And I got really obsessed with like, I got, I, I can't buy this or or tea. You got to mm -hmm. make it fresh, or yeah, and I get to juice the stuff, you know, because there's like abundance. Because leafy greens grow so fast too. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh yeah. And a small space is great too, you know, like for growing leafy greens. Um, especially with lack of sun sometimes I get almost no sun in the winter here like two hours of sun oh my god in like maybe like a tiny little spot that's why I was like this I made it to be a goal this year to really build up and that's how I started being a little mm -hmm. more handy around I feel you on the uh, obsessiveness like I have to go through and grow one of every kind so especially <laughs> yeah Anytime I see a spinach, it's a variety I haven't grown before. I have to pick up a packet and try it. It's it's my obsession. And we've had basil obsessions, kidding. oregano. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. A lot of rabbit holes we've gone down. Well, I think, like, right now we have, like, eight different types of, like, we have literally every single type of lettuce and spinach that Park Seed has. Uh -huh. And we went through, planted every single one, and we're seeing, like, which ones we like the best. <laughs> yeah. Learn about them yeah it keeps life fun <laughs> variety definitely i don't watch much tv or anything i just watch a lot of fishing and, and gardening videos on youtube that's my whole life too i don't so, think i've turned on the tv for like the past decade uh, <laughs> I mean, there's it great? YouTube, yeah I used and there's to gardening be, this is the time of year where i always reminisce on how much of my life was wasted watching football in the past i was obsessed with football like i had to watch like yeah. every game and now I don't watch any of it, and I'm so much happier just spending my time oh. outside. Yeah. This is always the time of year when football's starting, where everyone yeah. else is to talk about football. And I'm just like, y'all need to just come outside. Just stop watching it. <laughs> Maybe you can set it up in the garden, the TV in the garden, and hang out and watch I know, lure around. them in. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so hopefully the <laughs> season's a little Funny cooler snaps. to do that. <laughs> so have you always lived in California? Yes. Oh, I was born in Vietnam and I came here when I was like seven. Always been a Southern Californian. Yeah. You're from Southern California. I am. No, that's right. Yeah. yeah. By yeah the beach. I moved away when I was seven. So <laughs> <laughs> you left when I came. <laughs> I know, right? You all just miss each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just did. I'm glad I see you guys on here now. <laughs> yeah i i never grew anything though whenever i was a kid out there we just 
we didn't start doing anything until moved out here. Yeah. Well, I think life definitely, you know, they sort of align you with things you're supposed to, I guess, mm -hmm. with the things mm -hmm. that happen. Like with me, I think certain things that I feel like if it's like on the right path, then it kind of goes more smoothly or things sort of just fall into place. Like I yes. started out with a little garden, the first house we moved into, you know, like already had a few onions and strawberries growing and and that was like my joy because I'm an only child and my parents were really strict and like about my safety too. I wasn't allowed to go out with friends or do anything. So the funnest time I remember, especially in the summer, was like, you know, when the sun is setting, you see that nice, like, I guess that sunset or about to set. And we didn't have a nozzle in the watering hose. So I would just put my thumb over it. Mm -hmm. and kind of spray and I would make mm -hmm. rainbows like every single evening I'm That's like so I get to go out and see a rainbow you know splashing on the strawberries <laughs> that's fun that's, that's an awesome yeah. story yeah I think that's one of the cool things about gardening too is it helps you appreciate life from that angle mm -hmm. more readily especially like in the spring after we've been through because here everything goes like there's no green for about four months yeah. here yeah so when we first start seeing green in the garden again even though they're weeds they still make me happy because it's green and, <laughs> and being connected to that side of reality helps me a lot because my background before I got into gardening was very much spent most of my time on the computer I mean that's how mm -hmm. we you know, that's how I learned how to do stuff to build an app. But yeah, I had to find that balance in life. And the garden is what helped get me there. And I yeah. still struggle with it where like I've stared at the computer way too much the past few months and I need to get back in the garden. You know, <laughs> it's I, I always know I always tell people that you can tell how my mental health is doing by looking at my garden. <laughs> it's, it's just like weeds <laughs> everywhere and stuff. Then either i'm Your like imagination is wild or i'm in trouble <laughs> so if i've been fishing it's okay but um otherwise you know it means check on dell but if my feet are all you know if everything's all in order and i've got stuff growing and stuff then generally it means things are pretty good so well because then we can eat better too because we mm -hmm. have better food coming from the garden yeah that has a lot to do with mental health yeah how much of the food do you grow do you eat how much um, of what you eat is what you grow, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, almost, I think, 80% of, not everything, of leafy greens. I use a lot of mainly for juicing and smoothies in the garden. And then, like, some other vegetables are kind of like the add-ons because I don't get enough sun to grow mm. abundance of, like, say, root vegetables. Like, you know, beets, I think I have to grow it starting from, like, four feet, ideally, to actually see the beetroot like swell in the in the winter um yeah yeah so uh, a lot of um grass jelly oh wait we're going off topic here uh yeah it sounds like a fun topic though what is grass jelly <laughs> I, know. I need to know about grass jelly <laughs> I'm, like starting to list the things I eat. um let's do yeah, it main, mainly um leafy greens and grass jelly has been like summer favorite here because it grows like a vine leafy green and um, the juice when you extract it is literally like what like form like jello it's yeah. just so yeah like the this. pectin does it is... have another name that i might know if i i uh, i don't even know if i got the actual scientific name right like this is just like an Asian... oh that is so interesting <laughs> yeah. Grass but jello. it's a climber right. so it's perfect you know gets the yeah. sun I'm and sure their leafy greens right here that would be fun, it would especially be. for the we kids. So what are yeah. some of your other, uh, your other favorite things that you grow? Uh, I try to grow a little more. I have a, some Asian and, and tropical fruit trees that are still small right now. And they're on containers. I'm testing out new different types of containers, hopefully that they would grow better in that small space. And <clears throat> I don't think they're ever going to be in the ground unless I move. Mm -hmm. uh yeah so that and like a lot of like some strawberries and little berries so smaller fruits I try to focus on okay growing. yeah and I have a, a decent amount of um strawberries this summer that's your favorite isn't it strawberries one of my favorites especially when you get like sometimes a really good one because the problem mm -hmm. with here is not getting <laughs> enough sun 
Yeah. And then you have yeah. to get the right varieties. A yeah. fresh strawberry out of the garden is just unlike anything else. It's, it's so sweet. Like it tastes yeah. like golden sugar already. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so crazy, right? Like people talk about like the hype right now about special strawberries. And I was thinking, how is it really compared to like a homegrown, you know, fully yeah. ripened strawberry? I've had some and I was like, they're good, but it's really unbeatable yeah, to like garden. compares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine us growing those varieties, you know? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what other greens do you grow a lot of? I'm curious to learn more about what specific greens you grow. Uh, I have a tree collard, a green tree collard. I think it's, okay. is it like 13 feet tall or something? Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> it's on a raised bed that's actually connected to the ground. Uh -huh. So that one actually have to use like a clipper to reach for the leaves. And just like having the purple and the green tree collards is plenty if you want to make like the chips, you know, dehydrate chips out of it, juice mm -hmm. it, smoothies, um, mulching. No, I don't really do mulching with our, my leaves. Um, they go in my compost mm -hmm. and then for the worms. Um, I have a tree cabbage is one of them my... Uh, my buddy actually likes he uh, he provides part of the the plants that I sell but then he also shares like the new varieties that he comes up with and one of them it's called a tree cabbage and it's literally like little cabbages that grows upwards so you can get like an endive kind of size cabbages and it grows yeah. year-round that's really that's so a really beautiful <laughs> I've never heard of these things. These are these sound so oh, awesome. I know. I'm the, I mean, yeah for everything. I know. <laughs> yeah, this one's just literally like I think he bred it somehow. I don't know what he does, but he's in like off in this little land that I think nothing it's harder for other things to come in and mix with the mm -hmm. varieties. Well that's that, I don't know. Too. But that's mm -hmm. yeah, it's really cool. And um Swiss charts, one more normal ones, but really beautiful. Oh, I love Swiss charts. Yeah yeah what would variety grow the most do you have a favorite um of swiss charts or, mm -hmm. or oh, okay oh my gosh i don't remember the names i do like a lot of like the flamingos and the deep blood red ones just yes. very vibrant color mm -hmm. ones me too they just look delicious yeah, i always get the bright <laughs> lights just it's so pretty and it mm -hmm. really makes it so the kids want to eat it because yeah it's colors and mm -hmm. Of course, I just like to eat it too because it's pretty. <laughs> yeah, it tastes really good too. It's you know, really we good. We do a lot of juicing, but we never really juice those type of greens. Yeah. We need to get back into it and try it again. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. inspire us to take up juicing again, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love to juice with that. And with pineapples, you really can cut out the greens of people that don't like the flavor of things. You know, okay. like a citrus, or that's what I usually like to add when people tell me they don't like greens or they try juices or like. You know, the nicer word they say instead yeah. of saying, oh, it's really tasty or it tastes okay. Like, this tastes really healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, yes. but then at least the pineapple or like the orange juice, like oranges seems to mm -hmm. cut out that sort of like green taste for people. And basil, surprisingly, like I think you guys mentioned basil earlier. I mm -hmm. love different varieties of that. And that goes well with like the sweet, like the what do you call it vitamin water like soaking it in water or a juice or adding in your juice or like making pesto or anything like sweet to savory dishes like basil is awesome it works well and it grows fast yeah I love a cinnamon basil that's my favorite thing I just had that with salad last night that's one of my yeah. favorites <laughs> yeah that and so um, good. really good that and I actually got some seeds, but I haven't started yet. Lemon basil, I'd love to. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, and lime basil. Mm -hmm. Lime basil reminds me of lemongrass. It's like mm -hmm. if you can't grow lemongrass, right. yeah, you just put that in. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like lemongrass without the whole crazy chopping or mincing, whatever you do to process it. Yeah, I always forget to bring our lemongrass in for the winter and then it dies. Oh, no. And, and so I'm not good at lemongrass, but we're going to get a house here soon and then I will be better at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, a good thing is that you can always start it easy by cuttings, right? The lemongrass. Yeah. Do you guys start yeah. it from cuttings? Yeah. That, like that's I the great thing in. about a lot of herbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Save a, a few, especially if you go to the grocery store. Yeah. Like, I really like this one. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Break it. <laughs> Root it. Yeah. What um 
what other um, herbs are you guys growing right now? Aiming for your for your dishes and things. So we grow a lot of oregano, thyme, sage. We still have basil that's holding on. Mm -hmm. We'll have basil for probably about another month before it gets too cold yeah. for it. Uh, we have some tarragon. Lots of. Pot. I was just thinking of tarragon. Yeah. <laughs> some parsley. Um, we have some curry. Oh, um, nice. Do we have any raw ram right now? I don't think we do. No. We, had in the we, past. we have some cilantro I planted the other day. It'll be up soon. Um, I think that's pretty much it Ooh. we have going right now. But we have a lot of different varieties within that. So when I say oregano, we have like Greek, Italian, and spicy. Mm -hmm. And then we have thyme, like we have lemon thyme. Like I'm going to sound yeah. like a gump if I start talking about these because I'm going to be like, we just don't speak every time. Um, and then she's going to start making time jokes because every time yes. I bring up time, she has to make every a time, time fun. Well, now is the time. I had to give her <laughs> she'd be sad if she didn't get a chance to. I would be, yeah. It's the I, easiest thing. It's just it's so easy to make her laugh. I love being <laughs> with her. <laughs> uh, I can't not crack up every time he says something about time. Every time. Every time. <laughs> and there's other things too that I can say. Like, what is that thing from how how I met your mother? Cool. <laughs> something I don't know. Major. Major, I don't remember what it is. Which part? <laughs> There's a there's a thing they always did over and over that, of course, now I'm not going to remember it, but yeah. you've got several different trigger phrases that'll make you giggle every time. That's cute. <laughs> it's nice to be able to make each other laugh all the time. Well, we'd have to to spend <laughs> as much time easier. as we do together. I mean, we, we work yeah. together, we live together, yeah. we fish together, we garden together, we do everything together. So, um, so nice. She's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> She sure, she better be. <laughs> She's my favorite person. She's my favorite person. <laughs> so nice it's to have a partner to garden that. together. <laughs> What's that? It's so nice to have a, a partner to garden together. Yes, because I hate writing so much. Like physically writing things, I, I hate it. It stresses me out because I always like write the wrong letter. Yeah. So we're out there planting. Like she's, teamwork. she's writing all the labels. I'm doing the planting. It's Ooh. great. <laughs> Good and teamwork. Then, and then this baby will be involved here soon. Yes, you will. Yeah. Start them off with the planting chives or the onion sets pretty early. Yeah. You know those little bunches of onions? Mm -hmm. Kids are perfect at planting them. Oh yeah. They're they're they are they'll be really helpful for growing, like plant like the shorter stuff, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the yeah, strawberries. And they're not very good oh, at yes. small seeds. Our five-year-old loves strawberries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's that's he loves to stay in the garden and he always goes out there checks on his strawberries <laughs> needs his strawberry bed like that's that's his baby over there <laughs> but he gave you his first strawberry he was very sweet about oh, it so that's sweet. true love yes it is <laughs> <laughs> well he might be going to like friends birthday parties and have some strawberries but he gets to taste nothing like i had i know, know right <laughs> disappointing <laughs> yep <laughs> The worst thing to have kids plant is lettuce because you're going to end up oh. with a giant pile of lettuce <laughs> in one spot because they drop all the seeds. So. Well, you can teach <laughs> teach them how to snip them or, or pick off like little yeah. microgreens, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's exactly what we do. We always plant super dense and then we just go through and thin them down as we yeah. harvest them, eat them at every stage. And yeah. Yeah. You know what I've never grown that well with is um tarragon. I keep mm -hmm. having to repurchase them. Like it, it'll grow kind of well for a while and then it kind of dies back. I wonder what it, hmm. it doesn't seem like. I think they like sun, but not too much sun or, or dry heat here. And then it's like too little water or too. It's it's a little more of those more finicky herbs for me. Yeah, ours ours is doing well, um, and I don't really do much with it, so. Maybe that's the key. That's the key. Alone. <laughs> I did once and it died. <laughs> I feel like it's common. People give things too much love and they don't yeah. necessarily even need it. Yeah. I'll try that. Killed with too much love. <laughs> You're that's like, I love this. Here. I really want to make this work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, our first year we flooded everything. I was out there watering it for like an hour every day, every plant. I mean, that's all I did was water plants. <laughs> well, if they're that in the ground, work. yeah, if they're in the ground, it's a little more forgiving. Okay. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the trouble is when we have these summers like we just had where it's 100 degrees. Yeah. One day after another, we don't get any rain for we had, we had about two months where we barely had any rain. It was rough. So that's when we got to get the sprinklers out. And, it's but humid it, too, right? Like it's not I here so much. Not. It doesn't really get that humid yeah. here. It's it's a it's not as dry as Vegas or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, obviously, we're between Vegas and the beach, so it's kind of between. It feels like it's between. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's probably like around here then, where I'm at. I'm at like inland, you know okay in la so yeah probably 20 percent humidity 20 to 30 oh, wow. yeah sometimes yeah. 10 but <laughs> i would have thought it would have been more humid yeah I know. yeah i'm not too yeah i'm kind of not that close to the beach like it's still like a 50 minute drive for me 40 mm -hmm. to 50 minutes yeah so um it's kind of dry here especially when it's really warm then even the things in a shade like the leaves would be crunchy but they're green so they're like perfectly dehydrated mm. <laughs> because i'm having tea instead of salad for dinner you know <laughs> <laughs> that's funny <laughs> so dry here sometimes i'm gonna keep thinking of, of herbs that i forgot to say the entire day now oh god <laughs> 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 we just kicked, we just kicked off that background thread, and I forgot to say mint too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah, mint. a lot of different mint, mints. Mm -hmm. Me it's too. So I just need to figure out a spot from them to grow. <laughs> oh, I know, because they take over everywhere. <laughs> oh, I don't have it everywhere for them to take over. I don't have anywhere for them to take over. <laughs> That's my problem. It's like the opposite. <laughs> what so is that? Had... Oh, go ahead. Oh, just wondered, I was curious what kind of mint you guys grow because you have variety. Again, we're ridiculous because we hardly use any of it. They're I just want to, I just want to have each of them. So we grow. I just want to like smell them. Yes. Mm -hmm. them. Now in the summer, waters. Yeah. in the summer, she makes this really good drink. How do you make that again? Well, we do. So I like to chop up cucumbers, first of all, too, and have them in the freezer and use yeah. them like ice cubes oh and then we do just water and then soaking mint in it too mm. yeah really good do that a lot yeah it's like so when it's really hot it just cools you down because it has that cooling action of the mint too mm -hmm. that's really yeah, funny we have like yeah spearmint peppermint chocolate mint like oh I mean, gosh like, yeah everything out there oh there was even one that was my favorite. I cannot remember what it was. Do you remember? There, it was. It was a really unique one that we found in a local nursery. That I was I like, you, you did fail me. Oh. <laughs> Start naming all the it mints. Was one that I, I had hit never one. even heard of. And I is just it floral it. or is it citrusy? Is it floral? No, it, it? it's it's minty. Minty, <laughs> super minty. <laughs> Good luck with this one. <laughs> Egyptian mint is the super minty mint that I wrote. <laughs> it's like almost like burns your mouth spicy, like putting on toothpaste kind of minty. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Very, very strong. <laughs> Keeps so the bugs away. To, so if you had to recommend three herbs or three plants in general for people to grow that they may not know about, what would you choose? And do five if you need to. Oh, I just can I do ten? But I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> it's it. really hard to choose. Um, I just top of my head, I think grass jelly. Okay. Because um, like I just mentioned, it's just fun and like fun for kids, fun for yourselves. All the pectin, it's actually good to feed like prebiotics for your guts. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, and it's a climber, so you can kind of just put it in the background somewhere. It takes very little space. It, it can get like kind of crazy invasive just because it's so hardy. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite right. plants. Yeah. Do you have it in your store? Yes, I do. Okay, we need to go check that out. <laughs> oh, I'll send you guys one. My gosh. <laughs> uh, what other ones? I'm trying to think easy. Uh, actually, 
Hmm, tree collard. That's another fun one because it grows year round and it tolerates cold, depending on, I think, maybe zone eight, seven, it's probably pushing it, you know, but um, at least it covers a good amount of area. And um, it's just one that grows for us, especially year round. Again, vertical, you can, this could be like a tree, plant other stuff in the bottom. It's awesome. Um, versatility with it, making from chips to sauteing, baking with it, pureeing, whatever you do. So I think I like the variety in that. How big um, does it get? What's that? How big does it get? Oh, uh, the, the green tree collard can get as tall as, actually, I don't know. I think uh, my friend who gardens a lot, John Kohler over at Growing Your Greens, said he's like the tallest he's ever seen. He's seen many gardens and that's when it's like 13 feet tall or something. It's almost reaching like in midway to second story or something. Wow. How long yeah. did it get that big? Three years. <laughs> it's a really wow. fast growing wow. one. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, we the, definitely the, gotta try that. I yeah. know we're home seven, so fingers crossed. We'll fingers try. crossed. Get it more established during the warm, I guess, the growing season, and then mulch heavily, hopefully. Yeah. Um, the purple tree collar is cool too, but it doesn't, for me at least, it hasn't, it's not anywhere near that height. And it seems to be a little more like bushy or all over the place, floppy. Uh, but I like the purple. Like I like the rich pigment in food. Yeah, yeah. I'm a sucker for anything purple. <laughs> right. They're just so pretty. And yeah, yeah. At least like have it please the eye first. It kind of makes you, I don't know, salivate. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> um, see, Genera, it's also called longevity spinach. It's not related to spinach at all, but it has that similar texture when you cook with it. Mm -hmm. It's also um, a little gelatinous when you like blend it in a smoothie, like eventually the smoothie okay. kind of thicken a little bit. Nothing like a blueberry like that, but, um, but I like how versatile it is. Again, like good in stir fries, cooked or raw. And then when you blend it in a smoothie, it's like spinach, you know, it's not like kale where you blend it and you can, um, taste a little bit of that texture yeah mm -hmm. it doesn't do that so it comes down like goes down really smoothly oh that's mm -hmm. nice okay. yeah and it grows really well like during the warm season it's like it's a fast grower that's awesome yeah we're always looking for more greens that we can grow mm -hmm. like in the summer and and all that because I mean, we, we always miss our spinach and kale and supposed to start all of that during the summer. It could toss so fast here that we yeah. our window on spinach is pretty short in the spring. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, for us is winter, you know. Yeah. Our spinach. <laughs> yep. And then um, what was the one? I think basil is one of my big favorites. I think it's a lot of people's favorites. I like the more unique ones like the the lemon basil, the the clove basil is one of my top favorites. Uh, I haven't tried the clove basil before. Mm, I don't think we've seen that. That sounds yeah. incredible. It actually is, it's like a more uh, intense Thai basil kind of tastes like. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that and the lime basil is really good. Mm -hmm. And just mixing those variety in the salad a little bit of this and that is just so good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah and strawberries i really think people need to experience you know yes like what a real strawberry like people say don't like fruits or don't like strawberries or whatever <laughs> oh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the alpines the little strawberries that taste literally like candy mm -hmm. when they like dry up in the sun oh my gosh they literally taste like gummies like strawberry gummies <laughs> i'm getting really hungry for a strawberry salad right now I know. <laughs> so oh, yeah <laughs> I they are really good in a salad. I'm so excited for our greens to come back. Yeah. They, they popped up about a week ago. We should so have tiny. <laughs> probably about a month away from starting to be able to harvest some of the lettuces, but I'm so ready for them to be back. Mm -hmm. I miss them. <laughs> yeah. That's why we need that longevity spinach, you said? Oh, yeah, longevity That's spinach. Why. Yeah. We do Malabar spinach here in the summer. Oh, yeah. Um, New Zealand spinach. Mm hmm but neither of them really have the flavor of spinach. So I'm curious to try this other one, the longevity. Yeah, spinach. I prefer, yeah, I, I've grown that one before too. And that one actually is such hearty, you know, the, the New Zealand spinach. 
and uh, but yeah, I don't prefer the taste as much. And the oxalate level seems to be on the higher side, so I actually didn't eat as much as like it was just kind of growing everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Oh, Roselle, the cranberry hibiscus. Oh, um, no. guys, yeah. um, I think it's also called like Jamaican hibiscus or something. The leaves are sour, and oh, you might recognize the color tea. The, the red tea, like the red water tea. So the flowers are really beautiful. And then the calyx kind of swell up and it looks more like the fruit of the plant. Uh-huh. Okay. And that is like kind of crunchy raw, but they can be steeped in tea when you dry them or people candy those. Um, the leaves are also edible. It's one of the super heat loving plants, like Vegas, kind of like a summer heat. They love it. Arizona, like very like mm. desert places. Yeah. But they also like like moist soil, but like lots of heat. They're not like they thrive in the heat. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the the dark color, the red leaf ones reminds me of maple trees. And like I love the beauty, you know, of maple trees. And that's like my substitute. Mm-hmm. And it's edible. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So many. I feel like you're inspiring us to start so many different plants. And- <laughs> <laughs> That's what's fun about gardening, right? Like every year, like you can't oh. get bored. There's so much to explore. So many new things, and there's mm-hmm. so much out there. My yeah. diet falls off the rails every winter and every summer when I lose greens. Like having oh. fresh greens is so important to me eating fresh stuff because that's kind of the base of everything is throw some spinach in a bowl and then start throwing some other stuff in there with it yeah when the spinach goes away then it's just kind of a bowl of stuff and i don't do it (laughs) (laughs) it's different when you have to even freezing you mm -hmm. know like it's nothing beats the fresh yeah oh yeah yeah and every time i buy spinach from the store i'm just looking at this bag like are you the bag with e coli (laughs) you know like because every other day there's a new recall on spinach it seems yeah. So I, unless I'm growing it, I just don't really trust it. Oh, yeah, there is actually, you remind me of um, a leafy green, a Vietnamese leafy green. I forget the name, but I'll, I'll share with you later. Um, I think it's called Juan. Oh my goodness, such a name. I, don't, I can't remember. It looks very similar to the Saba snake grass. And it's like a tropical, uh, like a Vietnamese leafy green. It's more on like a rare side. I don't think that many Vietnamese eat them either. But it has a texture, a little slimy. It's all good. Again, it's really good in smoothies. Uh, but it tastes like a spinach a little bit, you know, because okay. of that sort of a texture. And it grows really well indoors. Oh. So, okay. Yeah. See, now that's something we should do mm-hmm. is grow greens indoors. So that way we do have more winter. summer. Yeah, especially mm-hmm. we can do microgreens too. Yeah. Yes, microgreens. Uh, have you guys ever tried like the corn microgreens? It's like really sweet. I haven't. Corn? Like actual corn? Yeah. The the kernel. You just, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Oh, I did not know that you yeah. could. Be, yeah. Have <laughs> Super sweet. Like too sweet for my taste, but uh, it's crazy how sweet. Yeah. It's like a huh. stevia, like biting into that leaf, a stevia leaf. Wow. Yeah. Well, we'll try too. <laughs> we have a lot of corn around here. We we live on a farm, so we have oh, a, yeah. a fifty pound oh. barrel of corn. So, <laughs> gosh, I'm so jealous. You guys have like I can't have that much space to grow corn. You have to grow like a good amount to actually have like good pollination, right? And mm-hmm. and uh, fresh corn is the best. Like I only wait yeah. for those time of the year at my farmer's market. Like the guy that has it for like six weeks, you know. Mm-hmm. Especially if you can do the rainbow. Oh <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> See, I'm always all about colors. Yes. Fresh corn is so good. Like it, you can eat it straight off the It was stalk. almost like milky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or the, like it's like like I didn't even cook it first. Juice I, it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I haven't <laughs> thought about that. Yeah. But we call it like corn milk. And then yeah. I even mix it with a little bit of coconut milk in it. So it's like creamy. Mm-hmm. It's like a corn shake. Okay. Oh. Sounds a little odd, but actually works. Oh, what corn? I'm getting <laughs> so hungry. You know? <laughs> and then the cob, after you finish it, the kernels, the cob, if you boil water with it, makes a really sweet tea. Oh. <laughs> and add your herbs. You're learning so much from me. <laughs> Okay, new diet plan is to start recording these before lunch, and then I'm going <laughs> to go eat a salad right now. That's... We got to rearrange things a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Have some 
I've, I've never heard that about the cob before. Yeah. Like we just do. Yeah, I think in Asia you learn a lot about not being wasteful. Yeah. Like I remember uh, sugar cane is one of my favorites to munch on, and and coconuts. And our farmers market would peel, you know, sugar cane for you, and I would ask them. So, I mean, they're they're gonna go in the trash anyway. So I actually took some of the skin, like they peel off and boiled in water too. And especially if I had like um, coriander, cilantro, that's going to flower. Actually, I think that's like my favorite time in cilantro and the little like seeds. Yeah, when they're real fresh, the green. Yeah. They're, they're like so more, good. They're so good, right? They're more like floral. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that I throw that. So in. nice in a salad. Mm -hmm. Like in a wrap. Like I love that little cilantro crunch that, that you get. Little pop. Yeah. Yeah. Before it gets fibrous. Yeah. It's so good. It's another kind of hidden secret like that are onion flowers. Oh, yeah. Because they're that's a really nice sprinkle. Yeah. Yeah. And then also the pods that grow on things like uh, radish and. Uh, oh, I like the broccoli ones. Yeah. So there's there's several plants that after you let them go to flower, then they develop the pods on the end of them. And those pods, when they're young, are pretty good too. And they're extremely yeah. nutritious. I mean, that's one. Yeah. The plant put everything it had into making those pods. So it put the good stuff in there. I can't stop thinking of like broccoli soup with chives. <laughs> <laughs> like the puree one, you're saying that. We're all hungry now. I know. <laughs> when you turn this into a food podcast, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> grow your own food, make your own food podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I got a crazy uh, called a gooseberry Barbado gooseberry cactus growing out there. The leaves are edible and the fruits and flowers. Yeah, the, the yeah, fruits we are have, edible. Yeah, we, we grew a gooseberry. Not a cactus, though. Not a cactus. No. Yeah. yeah, that one's scary, but it's but, really cool. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, we've had gooseberry fruit before. Yeah. There's little, like, they're almost Neat. like gray. Oh, I can't. Yeah, they're like little translucent. You know, yeah. Really neat. And currants, like, I don't know, all those berries. Stuff. I is I don't we don't get cold enough for that sort of stuff here mm. so See, it's so nice one, you guys get to do that a new one that we actually did was goji berries oh yeah and they're flowering right so now surprised that was actually really good we got fruit for the first time off of it this Yay. year and it was it was good they look like little christmas lights it's i know right that's what i think <laughs> yeah, at least half of the but they're like super sweet tomatoes and they're just like yes tiny little them. ones that we yeah, really little, good wrap mm -hmm. yeah they would be so perfect in, in a salad or right yeah they're just so good just yeah like imagine out. if you dried yeah. some and like yeah. add it with like a your sauces right when you make yeah. your tomato sauce throw a little bit of that like a little pinch of it yeah mm -hmm. they yeah, do I look like it. christmas lights i'm yeah. sorry what? Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping we get a whole bunch more next year now since it started yeah producing i'm excited mm -hmm. for next year you do more cuttings of them but they can grow big when they're in the ground yeah it's in a big yeah. smart pot it's yeah. in like a 25 gallon yeah it's in a huge like, one that's so cool <laughs> well hopefully it's set now i had to move our whole garden about 50 yards to wow the side. <laughs> we're, oh. <laughs> we're in the process of building a new house and um so i had to move the garden to kind of match with that and uh it was a lot of work, but that <laughs> the plants will be happy. Yeah, luckily most everything's in smart pots and things like that. It's um, so simple. Yeah. Well, we've moved it. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I say simple. It was easy for me. Ain't <laughs> much to it. Just drag that heavy thing from there to there. You know. <laughs> yes, but you don't have to like dig something up. Yeah. Or, like, things like yeah. That. The funny thing is we actually, when we moved from, so we moved out to the country the week that COVID started. Oh, wow. Uh, Good timing. Was, we always wanted to do it. <laughs> when we Like when the lockdown started, we're like, okay, I don't know. I, I want to be able to like grow our own food and have more space. And I don't know how long the lockdown is going to be. We just wanted yeah. to be, we're like, okay, now's the time to like live our dream and just do it. So, so we bought this land and, uh, and this house that was on it back then. And, um, 
before that we lived in the city now like we still had like a pretty decent lot it was like a third of an acre lot but that was that's pretty typical for like oklahoma um but we we basically filled every square inch of it with gardens and outgrew that space wow. and... but you should have seen us so we moved the all the soil like all the soil from that <laughs> garden we moved yeah. all the yeah, raised like beds tore them all down. yeah we took we we made so many trips with a big trailer full with just smart pots just lined up Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a really good gym membership oh yeah what, better than that i know I, people anytime the topic of gym memberships comes up i'm like well, just start a garden and start yeah. real stuff you, get actually, a goat, you have to start buying hay because you got to go carry ahead. hay around everywhere you're actually working out different parts of your muscles more than like a regular yeah. like a gym would right and yeah exactly. strengthening the tiny little ones that yeah you don't get to do that <laughs> <laughs> uh, our kids are so strong like yeah uh i think just from growing up around nice. there, like carrying mm-hmm. 30 pound feed sacks from the car to the shed and yeah yeah you know what's funny is that i just i got like a, a tumbler a compost tumbler i'm yeah. so happy i'm able to do some sort of like heat composting in this small space and People, I think, were commenting how, like, the more full it gets, the harder it is to turn it. But I was like, it mm-hmm. seems like it got easier for me. I'm getting stronger from that exercise. I'm turning <laughs> like crazy go. every day. <laughs> Are you using worms in there, too, or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I have a separate worm bin. Okay. Yeah, for the worms. And mainly, like, the juice pulp, like, the smaller bits of stuff go in there. Yeah. And then there's the heat compost. And I'm actually trying the Bukashi compost in the tumbler. Because like I did I did a video showing how to uh, do Bukashi composting. That's the, like the greatest thing about that is like food scraps, actual cooked foods or meats or small little bones or fats can go in. And it's really great for like even indoor or winter composting and for small space. So I did I did this video showing how you after do like fermenting all that food usually they would dig a trench in the ground to like bury it for like two to three weeks or, or a month time. The food just disappears. I don't have that kind of ground space. So I would, as I thought of like, how, how would it work if I actually put it in like a tub and it worked, like it really just needed some soil to like bury it. So Mm -hmm. that's how I was doing it. And food broke down in like three weeks. But when I tried the Bukashi after fermenting the food, I put it in the composter, which is actually a next video. I'll be like sharing more information about that. But literally it broke down. Most of the food broke down like a week or a week and a half in the tumbler. Yeah. So it was like heat processing Mm -hmm. it after the book. It's crazy. So like, I just love experimenting different ways to see how you can do things more efficiently, like in a small space. Awesome. Is this going to be on your Instagram or YouTube channel? Where where Uh, YouTube? I do go more in depth on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's the name of your channel so people can follow you? Yeah, it's called Gardens of Wendelin, but for short, just put Wendelin. You'll be able to find it. So my name is spelled with an I, W E N D I, L A N D, all one word, and um, yeah, it'll pop up. (laughs) Yeah, we'll definitely need to check out your YouTube channel too. That sounds like yeah, I'll have to watch that. That's all I watch is YouTube. So yeah. I'll, I'll be right, checking. me too. Anything you want to learn, I know. It's get feedback. A, yeah. Amazing tool. I don't. I don't think I could ever go back to watching regular TV. I just feel like I'm wasting my time. Like I could be learning something. Yeah. Thing right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind some TV, but there's just I don't have that time. <laughs> I don't make time yeah. for it. I guess I'll just put it that way. <laughs> Here I am. I'm giggling in my head again about the time. Don't. Uh, <laughs> i still have it stuck on my head yeah we do well we used to do a lot of home and garden show type things yeah go like just sit in front of these people and talk about uh just how to grow 10 different herbs or something like that and it was kind of awkward because you're just like sitting in there and people are like we just get up and leave in the middle of you talking and then people are coming and going it's just so we just kind of, every time we talked about time, she would just start giggling. <laughs> we were just kind of delirious from like, because we would go to home and garden shows and we literally took our RV there and I would stay up there because the show was like from, you know, like 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. and every day. Yeah. And I'd be yeah. out there the whole day with my iPad just showing people the app being like, try this app. <laughs> <laughs> and then like we did classes, you know, like 
yeah our administrative classes and oh wow it was good times like it was fun but i don't <laughs> and it was... now i'm just aware of how i'm like waiting for her to laugh you know kidding. yeah <laughs> We brought in like it's probably like 20 or 30 yeah. smart pots to show all these like demonstration plants and set up all this space and stuff. Another gym was... membership right there, you know. I know. Yeah. You know, maybe I should do it again. I could lose some weight. That's my problem right now. I'm not doing enough home and garden shows. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw one of them that you were talking about, like giving a talk about, was it composting or something? I forget. Probably. Um, he yeah. has done composting talks. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, no. Ellie might be uh, saying it's it. Laugh to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are these bright lights in my face? What are y'all doing? <laughs> How well, Wendy, it was awesome to get to talk to you and get to learn more about what you're doing out yeah. there. Yeah. Is there Super. anything else you want to plug or talk about? Now oh, you can find me on my social media. More things I want to chat about. I can go on and on about, you know, my favorites, my a hundred. Fa- no, I don't know. I don't know if I can list a hundred. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you shared yeah. your favorites because those are. Oh, hi, Ellie. That's very rude to our guest. <laughs> Ellie, she's new at being a co-host. <laughs> she's learning. Hey, hey, bad dream. My goodness. Yeah. So my, the high-pitched laugh made it well go. My goodness. Bad dream. Ran out of milk. <laughs> what a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm so excited to try some of those new plants that you said. And I definitely want yeah. the grass jelly. I know. I think the kids but, would love that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to learn more about grass jelly from you. So maybe that's another video we can make here soon. We can talk about some grass jelly. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll ask you for your info. I'll send you a grass jelly. <laughs> well, awesome. Maybe then you can tell us more about it and how to plant it and how to care for it. And all that. Yeah, I'll share with you a video of how I did the, the jello with it. Really awesome. fun. Yeah, great. <laughs> well, Wendy, it's good to yeah. talk to you. Likewise. And hopefully we'll get to talk again. For sure. Love to. I'm jealous of your, your growing conditions coming up. <laughs> I'm jealous of all the land. <laughs> all the space. You're like, I can grow 10 of each variety for music. I want to grow 10. I guess I'll have one of each plant. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are pretty lucky. Yep. <laughs> well, thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Nice chat with you guys. Bye, Allie.